Right, so on to our penultimate speaker. So yeah, John Lloyd from the Independent Pest Management and Insect Consultancy, um, talking about insect identification. Now I know John has got a, a very thorough presentation coming up, and of course of insect ID, it's a massive subject. And uh, yeah, John, you can only get through so much, I know, can't you? <laughs> You're dead right, you could spend a whole day or a week on it, so uh, let's see what we can do in the next 30 minutes. Absolutely. I'll leave you to it and I'll uh, come back to you again at the end and we'll do some Q&A's. Um, so, yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, today we will be talking about insects. I just wanted to um, uh, give um, broaden the understanding about insects and um, the um, aspects of their identification, just to uh, make things clear across the group. Um, topics we will be covering, uh, insect structure, the classification of insects, um, and as part of that, the body structure and organization, larval forms, metamorphosis, insect families, touching on the following, which are there on the screen, from cockroaches to bugs to beetles. Um, but, but I've tried to just uh, focus there on the, the main pest groups. Uh, as you know, there's so many that you can possibly pick. <clears throat> so, to uh, understand and identify insects, it's necessary to have a basic awareness of their form, function, and structure. And um, either a basic understanding of that or even a comprehensive understanding of that will go a long way in helping with their identification. Insects are a large, ubiquitous group of animals and they belong to arthropoda. Uh, they care in terrestrial and freshwater communities. Um, they're numerous, there's over a million named species in collections, and as entomologists estimate there's uh, easily 5 to 10 million species worldwide. But more recent estimates based on um, sampling from rainforests suggest the numbers could be as high as 5 to 10 million insect species, which will obviously be under threat. They come from the group Arthropoda, as uh, said, and uh, you have these divisions of uh, body section, uh, body segments. Uh, Chelicerates, um, they have two body segments, six pairs of appendages, four pairs of jointed legs, and a pair of jointed jaws or chelicerae. They also have segmented pedipalps or fangs. Myriapods um, have many pairs of legs and no wings, and crustacea have two body segments, uh, several pairs of legs, two pairs of antennae, and they have gills. And then insects have three body divisions, as I'm sure you're all aware, with three pairs of legs, and they are usually winged. Characteristics of arthropods. These include, uh, they have no bony skeleton, uh, but they do have a tough exoskeleton, which consists of chitin and protein. They have distinct head formed from fused body segments and they have segmented legs. Their molting is controlled by hormones. Insect structure, they have a very tough uh, external exoskeleton. This enables them to survive in a wide variety of circumstances. It reduces water loss, it, it reduces uh, risk of predation and um, uh, it's uh, a a very good survival adaptation. In terms of their development, uh, for, for arthropods, uh, segments along their body length are fused together, and uh, these are, or they can be linked by uh, joint tissue to form distinct sections called a tagma. In insects, each body section, from an evol evolutionary point of view, consists of fused segments, and these features define the insect form and are called tagmata. So you can see here how uh, the basic uh, primitive arthropod um, uh, has many segments and the insect consists of three defined sections which are comprised of fused tagmata. So the characteristics, they have three tag marker, three tagma, sorry, um, head, thorax and abdomen and each tagma is composed of a characteristic body segments. So the head has a pair of antennae. The thorax has six legs, which are composed of segments. And the abdomen, in the case of insects, uh, has ab its abdominal legs suppressed. Additional characteristics, 
uh, there is usually uh, the presence of one or two pairs of wings. The insects have very specialised mouthparts and metamorphosis is common. A developed nervous system and digestive system is present and tracheal respiration is usually carried out by the spiracles. In terms of their evolution and development, they've been around for over 300 million years and evolved from marine crustacea. Uh, insects have undergone a very diverse range of variation and specialization. And 97% of insects are terrestrial and the remainder are freshwater, uh, exist in freshwater environments. Insect evolution and development, insects have adapted to a wide range of habitats and ecosystems and as new categories of plants developed, uh, insects adapted to feed on them. And then as warm blooded uh, mammals developed and evolved, insects, some insects evolved to exploit uh, mammalian blood, faeces and decaying bodies. So you can see how they're able to capitalize on new environments and opportunities. And on the chart below there, you can see how um, they've evolved from basic proto annelid worm-like uh, creatures uh, which would have been related to the sea. Insect classification. This reflects uh, insect um, development from primitive to advanced forms. Groupings reflect the organization of the insect and complexity of the life cycle. And the first major evolutionary development in insects was the development of their wings. So we're going to look at the classif classification of insect groups. And uh, in, in this instance, we have the Apterogota, which ha have uh, no wings, and Pterygota, which are insect forms with wings. So with Pterygota, uh, Paleoptera are the more ancient wing forms, and they uh, have non-folding wings. And the example here is given is dragonfly. <clears throat> and with Neoptera, new winged, insect forms, uh, these are able to fold their wings. Now within this group, there's also some exceptions. So you have uh, butterflies, which have lost the ability to fold their wings, and you have fleas or bed bugs, which uh, uh, no longer have use of their wings and they've atrophied. So <clears throat> it's not part of their structure. So within the classes and orders of insects uh, and their related arthropods, uh, you have a number of classes, and the primitive classes are such as Columbola, Pretrora, Diclora. These are very small uh, insect like forms which have three body segments, uh, but their mouth parts are internalized. Uh, the class Insecta, as we said, is divided into subclasses of Apterogota without wings and Pterogota with wings. So if we look at the uh, subclass of pterygota. This consists of primitive insect forms and uh, the one you'll recognize here would be Thysonora or the um, firebrat silverfish. <clears throat> if we move on to pterygota, which are the winged forms, uh, the pterygotan group includes most other insects and it also includes, as I said, the secondary wingless insects. Uh, what I've done here, uh, it, it, it's organized in a sequence of from primitive to more advanced forms. And I've just highlighted in yellow uh, those groups which are related to pest. <clears throat> and I'm sure that many of you will recognize the non-pest uh, subclass groups yeah, in between. There's no point in me reading this through. So if you want to scan it, you can see there what, um, uh, what the pest uh, uh, families are. It continues to this one, second half of the table, continuation of Pterygota, uh, the winged group. Uh, Hemiptera, that's significant, uh, with it includes bed bugs. Um, Coleoptera, that's an extremely the largest group, which includes relevant pest species. Similarly, Dip has uh, a large number of uh, forms. Siphonoptera, fleas, and um, then Lepidoptera and Hymenoptera uh, being the more and most advanced classificational group. 
So to understand identification, you need to have an awareness of the body structure. And in this, I've also included some organization of the insect form. So the typical structure is head, thorax, abdomen, as discussed. Uh, on the head, you have a number of appendages, uh, antennae. You have um, simple eyes or ocelli and compound, compound eye structure. Uh, you also have one or two pairs of wings present and uh, legs tend to be segmented. And these, as well as the wings, can be uh, significant for uh, identification of particular insect species or group. As a lateral view, uh, you have, uh, again, the division of body sections, head, thorax, and abdomen. Uh, the, the three pairs of legs are associated with the middle section or thorax, and along the abdomen, and also some on the thorax, you have these uh, lateral uh, holes or spiracles, which allow the respiration. And towards the end, you also have cerci and reproductive uh, organs present, which also can help with identification. So don't worry about this. It's just a quick view of the overall plan. Uh, insects have got a developed circulatory system. You can see highlighted in red. They have an established and developed digestive system and uh, a, a, an efficient respiratory system too. They also have a nervous system, which is uh, effective, efficient, and um, uh, predates our own, and, and it works in a similar way. So in terms of respiration, they have um, a simple uh, um, uh, system. Uh, spiracles allow the direct flow of air uh, through the sides of the insect, that's the muscles. Um, the, as I said, laterally placed on the abdomen and also on the thorax. And there's usually where they occur, one pair on each, seg on each segment. You can see that uh, they have a very simple system compared to uh, man, who has a lot more um, uh, developed, sophisticated respiratory system. What is significant in terms of the body structure, and I'll describe this, that you have the air entering the spiracles. If you see the middle picture, you can see oxygen entering the hole. It passes through the tubular system or trachea, and then it passes into finer tracheoles, which are then, if you see uh, in the right-hand picture, connect directly with the muscles. Now, if you remember the picture before about the exoskeleton, uh, showing how resistant they are to the, their environment, um, in this instance, uh, spiracles provide a weakness. And so, uh, for example, uh, when uh, they've been treated with insecticide, uh, this is the quickest and most direct route for neurotoxin to be taken in through the exoskeleton, directly through to the muscles and um, to uh, result in effective and fast treatments. Also, similarly, if you're using diatomaceous earth and it's drawn into the sides of the spiracles, it will rapidly dry out the uh, tracheal tubes and result in rapid death. In terms of circulatory system, um, they have a very simple um, system, uh, a single dorsal ventral um, vessel uh, passing along the top of the insect through the abdomen, thorax and head. Uh, it contains a series of simple pumping regions or ostia, and the system is an open system, circulatory system, that allows hemolymph for their blood to be pumped towards the head and then gradually travels around the body. Hemolymph is important because it transports immune cells, vitamins, and waste products uh, through the insect. There's also an element, smaller element of oxygen, but that's uh, normally taken care of through the spiracles. But when you have a, a, a pupa, um, then there is more uh, high concentrations of oxygen in the blood. So if we look at larval forms, <clears throat> you have to forgive this, there's a lot going on. Um, uh, if, if you think in terms of larval forms, in terms of uh, the presence or absence of the head capsule, and also about the presence and absence of legs and how they occur. 
So uh, with regards to fly larvae, uh, they are the most primitive and simplest uh, structure. They have an indistinct or reduced head. Uh, they have uh, uh, no thoracic legs, but in terms of the flies, uh, typical maggot, housefly, they will have concentrations of chitin, which will enable the creature to locomote. Uh, these are known as creeping welts. And in the case of uh, primitive uh, maggot larval forms, um, these larvae desiccate easily, and therefore um, they have managed to specialize and to develop in moist environments, such as water, wood, decaying organic matter, or even within body tissue um, to reduce the risk of desiccation. <clears throat> Uh, another variation of form, uh, moth larvae. Uh, the larvae uh, are clearly segmented. They have uh, thoracic legs and fleshy prolegs. And um, the, at the rear of the structure, they have uh, uh, rear claspers at the end of the abdomen. They have a well-developed head. They are highly motile and um, they are um, uh, efficient in establishing and colonizing new areas. They're not as restricted as, say, fly maggots uh, or fly larva in, in their environment. Then a more advanced form of the moth larva are the beetle larva, uh, which can occur in a number of forms. You either have the C-shaped larva uh, without, the, uh, without segmented thoracic legs, um, also known as scarabi form, and also the more caterpillar-like in structure, campodiaform larva, which um, uh, come in a variety of forms. Uh, they have greater level of mobility or motility. They can um, uh, move from one resource area to another area for food, or they can um, um, be predatory as well. So that's an important development and, and life, life, strategy, life supporting surviving strategy. To give you an idea, there's, within all of the different orders, there's a, a, there can be a variety of larval forms. I've just picked um, Coleoptera here, um, just so at a glance you can have a feel for how this um, variation in form can, can occur. So scarabea form uh, larva, uh, you can see here in uh, three and two uh, in the middle of the picture. And um, so the three would be typical of a weevil uh, that exists within its, uh, in its food substrate, its nut, its seed, it doesn't need to go anywhere, it doesn't need its legs. Um, scarabea form where uh, uh, the scarab type beetle, which, uh, or cockchaffer type, um, which will just have a limited level of mo mobility within its food substrate. And number four, uh, which would be wood borer, uh, beetle living within within the timber. Then outside of that, then you have the um, the the com com um, com uh, com 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 uh, larva, which are caterpillar-like, uh, very mobile with their legs. Within that, you will either have scavenger species such as uh, number eight and number seven um, domestic beetle larvae. Um, and if you look at the extreme far left and far right, um, they can also be highly predaceous as well. So you have carabid and tiger beetles, which are uh, very mobile, very aggressive, very well developed jaws, and, um, and um, have successful life strategies of their own. So within other insect orders, you will find some variation uh, of the forms of larvae. Insect metamorphosis. Um, there's three types. There's simple development, example, silverfish, which is a, a, a metabolist development uh, where you have a, a simple egg hatch and then you have the, the, the nymph is a small version of the adult and progression takes place in a series of molts until uh, the fertile adult form. Uh, incomplete metamorphosis, example, hemiptera, and uh, in this, you have um, hem hemimetabolous uh, development where you have uh, egg, a series of uh, the in initial nymphs do not resemble the adult form, but by way of a series of molts, they, they develop into uh, a winged adult. And you have complete metamorphosis, um, 
um, hollow metabolist development, where you have each stage is different and unique from the other. Um, it's worth pointing out here that in the more primitive forms of development, um, such as simple development and incomplete metamorphosis, the adults and nymphs eat the same food. And in the more uh, advanced, complex, complete metamorphosis, uh, the, each, uh, the larva and the adult eat different types of food. And that has significance with regards to uh, pest implications for pest species. <clears throat> Insect families, um, Blattodia, uh, cockroaches from the Greek bladder, meaning light shunning insects. These have primitive wing, these are primitive winged insects with small, well defined head and jaws. They have long antennae, large compound eyes, and two ocelli. Um, the, the, flat, the flat body profile enables them to get into nooks and crannies within hard bridge points. They have typically spiny legs and uh, most importantly, two cerci protruding from the rear of the abdomen. Hemitron, uh, <clears throat> these are from, uh, named from the Greek uh, hemisis, which is half, and petra for wing. So hemitra, uh, two front wings, the hemolytra are thickened towards the base, uh, that's towards the head end, and uh, they have membrane, membranous wings towards the tip. Uh, which uh, overlap towards the tip, if you see the picture to the right. Um, they also have hind wings, which are membranous. There's characteristically a triangular plate or scutellum between the base of the wings on the body of these insects. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, they feed by sucking and they have uh, mouth parts and mandibles and maxillae elongated to form uh, a beak or a piercing stylet. Their life forms are either stack feeders, seed feeders, uh, they can be predatory such as assassin bugs um, uh, sucking juices from prey, um, or they can be parasitic. <clears throat> um, triatamine bugs uh, are able to suck blood and are able uh, to be vectors of Chagas disease caused by tri trypanosoma blood parasites. So that's mainly in South America, but it's a significant pest family. With regards to hemitra and bed bugs, um, these are parasitic blood feeders, as you're aware. Um, they have vestigial wing pads uh, where wings would normally, would have usually developed, um, but they no longer require them. And um, the wing pads are present both in older nymphal stages and in adults. Coleoptera, they're named from the Greek uh, coleos uh, for sheath and terra for wing. Uh, they're the largest group of uh, insects with over 350,000 species uh, named worldwide. They have two pairs of wings, uh, the membranous uh, hind wings, and uh, they have front pair of hardened wing cases uh, called elytra. These are very important in the uh, identification of beetles and they can have surface fe features such as lines known as striations. Um, they can have uh, puncture pot marks. They can have um, uh, colored patterns from uh, pigmentation or arrangements of hairs. So uh, the nature of the, um, the appearance and the shape of elytra is significant in the classification of insect of beetles. <clears throat> Also importantly, the elytra extend along the body to protect the membranous wing, wings of the insect. And for some beetles that have shorter elytra, that is also a key diagnostic for the species or group. Beetles are plant feeders, predatory, and some are stored product insect pests. They have many adaptive forms and high diversity of lifestyles, such as terrestrial and aquatic. But um, they have well-adapted chewing mouth parts. And you can see here on the image, the defined uh, jaws and, and uh, mandibul mandibular structures. Um, the important thing here about the, the beetle um, picture is that their structure is very consistent. And uh, looking at the variations of these structures on beetles will enable you to determine what type of family and what type of species and if it is a pest species. 
antennae are an important characteristic in all insect groups, and it's impossible to go through them all. So what I've done here is I've put together some of the key uh, beetle pest species and therefore uh, highlighted on the types of antennae that they have. And you can see yourself that the, uh, there is a variety within uh, beetles, just as there is within flies uh, and other orders, insect orders too. So you can see here that the Caribidae beetle has um, a filiform, uh, long thin antennae, uh, Tenebrionidae, uh, there's a number of uh, forms that occur, and you can see here within the flower beetle you have the, uh, uh, the, the, the club-ended antennae, uh, which are clavate, and uh, with regards to Stagobium and Lasioderma, you have serrate or, uh, or saw-like uh, saw like edged antennae. Uh, domestic beetles have club end antennae. Uh, copra beetles also club end, and weevils have geniculated or elbowed antennae structure. Lepidoptera from the Greek lepido uh, scale and uh, means scale and terror for wing. These insects typically have uh, scaled wings consisting of overlapping scales, and this is a critical feature for identification. For feeding, they have a uh, modified tube or proboscis. They have complete metamorphosis, and larvae have well-developed jaws for chewing. Uh, butterflies have club-like like, club -like antennae, and the moths are, uh, antennae are variable. Some males have filamentous uh, or feather-like antennae. The structure of moth wings, I won't go into too much detail, but just so you can get your eye in, into thinking, um, the wing structures on the uh, moths are uh, important for identification, especially for pest species and non-pest species. Uh, the picture to the left, your eye will just easily fall on some discal spots on the wing. These are key features and consistent features in moths which can aid identification, orbicular stigma, reniform stigma. And the, the occurrence of uh, or absence of transverse lines is also an important characteristic. So if we look here, um, you have transverse lines and markings uh, in, in relation to stored product uh, moths. There's many other features you can use as well, uh, legs and genitalia, just fun focusing on these uh, uh, easy to determine features. Um, these transverse lines are known as anti-median fasci, median fasci, and post-median fasci, and terminal fasci. Um, and if you have a look at these, uh, the Ephestia moths here, uh, you can see, and, and the Indian meal moth, you can see that there is a certain uh, consistency in the presence or absence of transverse lines. And this is, uh, once you get your eye in, you're able, even on some badly damaged samples that have lost their scales, able to determine some uh, uh, markings. Uh, it's interesting that Festia quartella uh, it can be particularly drab, and um, and 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 if it if it's um, uh, too too difficult to determine, then maybe closer analysis or, or uh, genitalia analysis might be required. <clears throat> Flies, uh, they, these are named from the Latin die for two and terra for wing. There's one pair of um, <clears throat> there's one pair of membranous wings present. Hind wings are reduced to club-shaped halters, and these act as balancers to help with flight. The second largest group of insects after after beetles, and there are many diverse forms. The group includes flies, gnats, midges, and mosquitoes. So there's a wide spectrum of, of forms involved. They cover a wide range of environmental niches, um, uh, including both terrestrial and aquatic. And feeding methods also vary from scavengers, house flies, blood feeders, mosquitoes, plant gall feeders, uh, gall midges, and predators such as robber flies. Feeding mouthparts are suctorial and frequently adapted for piercing. You have sponging for uh, houseflies and blowflies, cutting and lapping by, for tabinid, uh, tabanids and horseflies, and piercing and sucking for mosquitoes. 
Wings have the nation, uh, and it's, it's an important diagnostic for flies that we can't go into now. Um, house flies, lesser house flies, tabernids, and um, califoridae or blowflies are higher order flies known as calypteric flies. They are strong flyers and they have strongly developed calyptor along the base of the wing. The calyptor is an important diagnostic in flies and its function is aerodynamic to improve flight. A second adjacent lobe, the allula, covers the halters uh, and uh, that obscures the organs of balance. So just here you can see these are higher flies and these are the, fun uh, the features on their wings that you need to look at. Siphonatra, we're nearly done. Siphonatra flees uh, from the Greek siphon, tube or pipe, and atra for wingless. Small wingless insects adapted to ectoparasism uh, on animals and birds. Developed hind legs allow for jumping, and their dorsa eventually flattened for moving through fur. Mouth parts are adapted for piercing and sucking blood, and they're generally brownish in colour. Hymenoptera, bees, wasps, sawflies, and ants from the Greek hymen, membrane, and terra, wing. The hymen, uh, or, or it could be from the hymen, the Greek god of marriage, the forewing and hindwing, and these insects are joined together by hooks. So you can decide whichever they gave rise to the nomenclature there. Uh, two pairs of membranous wings are present, and there's a, a large group of insects with over 15,000 species in Europe. Body structure, distinct sections, head, thorax and abdomen, they have a narrow waist or a petiole that joins the thorax or mesoma with the abdomen. Note that the sawflies do not have a petiole. Body structure, well-developed mouth parts for chewing or for chewing and sucking. Antennae are often elbowed. Females often have a stinger or ovipositor at the end of the abdomen. An ovipositor is like a saw-like piercing organ, uh, or can be used for uh, and, and can be used for laying eggs. Development metamorphosis is complete. Solitary life forms occur, but the order of Hymenoptera also has the most highly developed insect behaviors and uh, organized social groups, making them the more developed order of insects. Hymenoptera include many important insects, such as pollinators, predators, and parasitic wasps. Thank you. Any questions? Hi there, John. Thank you for that. Great. I suppose that's a, it's, it's, it's hard for you to have to sort of shoot through things, I think, isn't it? It's, it's got to be quite frustrating for you to not be able to really get into that, you know, that detail. Well, it, it, it can be tricky. <laughs> it can be, absolutely. No, you've got some great, great comments in the chat section about, you know, lots of things that everybody forgot, you know, and you're reminding them about loads of good stuff. So that's great. I've got a couple of little uh, questions here. So something I was thinking of as well, um, but uh, this is an anonymous question, but when you're out on a job, you know, we're out in the field, maybe we're limited in terms of the tools that we've got for identification. What's the easiest way that a pest controller can, you know, know find an insect or a larvae and make a judgment on what species it is well i'd say the first thing i mean it's worth doing with any insect i don't just say that because i'm a bit pro that way but um i think it is a mental as a mental exercise just to decide you know what is it pick, pick an insect off the floor decide what is it at a glance and then take it away and look more closely and then see yeah. if that if that if your if your opinion changes and mm -hmm. and look at the kind of features we spoke about um just the general divisions that can help you to then pigeonhole it into a particular family group if you can't take it further than that it doesn't matter there's so many hundreds thousands millions of these things but yeah. at least you've taken it to the to the first base and then if you've got the patients, take it to the second base. And, and then if you have two similar species, then ask yourself, is it this or is it that? And if it's that, why is it not this one? <laughs> and you yeah. have to double do a double check on yourself, looking at the antennae, the legs, the abdomen, the hairs, the structure. So mm -hmm. there's a lot, a lot of things. But it's a good, worthwhile exercise to do, because when you do pick up a pest in a factory or wherever you'll 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 recognize it far very very quickly even without having to resort to books yeah absolutely i think it's, it's you know if you're out in the field as well and you find an insect is it can help to you know ask the customer questions as well to help you to the identification you know where are you seeing it how many are you seeing it for what does it look like it's feeding on all these sorts of things as well 
And, and customers also welcome the feedback if something isn't a pest. So even if you're in the, I mean, given the fact that 95% of, the of these things are not pests, you know, if you're just able to differentiate and make that judgment call, well, that's a good start too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's really good to get get um, a sample of it and have a deeper look because by doing these things, seeing it, identifying it, you then got that that experience to be able to go back on rather than you know just maybe reading about. It. You know, we're very practical people, aren't we? Us for pest controllers, so we we learn by doing and seeing and taking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good you're stuff. Right. Um, is there any particular equipment you use to help with identification? And that's from Susan. Uh, in the field, simply uh, torch, magnifying glass, because uh, some of these things are four mil or less, um, and um, a container. So that, that's the first thing. Uh, but also in terms of library references, you find pretty good information now. Uh, OK, there's the Internet, of course. But if you wanted a more systematic approach, even something basic, like I would say um, the field guide to insects of Europe, for instance, um, even if you're in a country that is outside of Europe, it provides you with, with, the, with the tools for you to be able to pigeonhole an insect to a particular family and then take that investigation or research onto the next level. So something as simple as a, as a, as a decent field guide is, is a good aid. Yeah, and I say there's so many different species, isn't there? And also species that aren't actually necessarily a problem to have in the environment. It's just, it's just one of those things. Mm, it, it, you, you've got to make sure that you're dealing with a pest and not a non-pest species. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, especially product label-wise as well, isn't it? So, um, mm. great. Okay, so uh, uh, we've got a question here. What is the identification point for differentiating? Oh, blimey, I managed that word. Um, mayfly larvae and midge larvae and dragonfly larvae. <laughs> Don't know is a short answer. I can uh, get back to that person with that because I mean, again, I mean, in terms of remit in in pest world, then they don't come across the um, um, the, the, the doorstep that often. But I can, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with them, but I don't give them a woolly answer. So um, that's it. The many thousands of species there are. You just, you know, no one could possibly know all of them in all forms and and where they are. And and, how I mean, for kickoff, your, your dragonfly larvae are going to be free roaming around. And did he say uh, caddisfly? Did he say caddisfly? Uh, uh, mayfly, midge larvae, and dragonfly. Yeah, so the, the, the totally different thing. So um, I'd come back to him on that one. Yeah, no, no, fantastic. It's nice to get a challenging question, though, isn't it? Because it makes you go, oh, I'm going to go and have a look at that. I think <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. So, yeah, lots of comments about, you know, very informative, great for, you know, updating us with it. Um, they're asking about whether it's available to download afterwards. So, yeah, absolutely. We're going to put these uh, presentations up on online so you can do that. But I think um, that is all the questions that we've got for you. I've got a long, it's mixed up here, but yeah, that looks like um, that's all of them, John. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, you've done that very well. You got through all of that content, you know, particularly well, and everyone's very appreciative. Thank you. No, great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. Take care, bye -bye John. Now. Thank you. Bye-bye.